Well, hello. Today we are going back to Zamunda with Coming to America. Directed by Craig Brewer and starring Eddie Murphy, Arsenio Hall, and Jermaine Fowler. Prince Akeem Jaffer, played once again by Eddie Murphy, and his wife Lisa, played by Sherry Headley, are celebrating their 30th wedding anniversary. But the celebration is derailed by General Izzy, played by Wesley Snipes, from the warlike kingdom of Nextoria. Izzy wishes for Akeem's daughter to marry his son and unite their two kingdoms, but the Joffers aren't too keen on that idea because, obviously, they aren't fans of arranged marriages, and Izzy's son is kind of an idiot. The other option would be for Akeem's son to marry Izzy's daughter. Oh, except he has no son. Or does he? By the power of the retcon, it turns out Akeem does have an illegitimate son in New York. And that young man, Lavelle Johnson, played by Jermaine Fowler, is brought back to Zamunda as the rightful heir to the throne. And of course, hilarity ensues. I guess I should start by saying I really enjoyed the original Coming to America. Uh, it's one of Eddie Murphy's best, and it seems like he's kind of getting a career resurgence now, first with Dolomite as my name, and now this. And what impressed me right off the bat is they brought back almost the entire cast, even lesser characters like the one played by Louis Anderson. They brought everybody back except for a couple of people who couldn't make it due to scheduling conflicts, and of course Madge Sinclair, who is sadly no longer with us. Granted, they barely brought back James Earl Jones. Because of his age, he did not actually travel to the set, so all of his stuff was filmed separately. Uh, they did a decent job of hiding it, I thought, but you may notice Jones and Murphy are never in the same shot. There is, of course, plenty of fan service for fans of the original, especially near the end of the movie. The sexist preacher is still around, sexual chocolate is still around, McDowell's is somehow still around, they have not been sued into oblivion. <laughs> How is that even possible? I don't know. And this movie has enough cameos to make the Muppets jealous. Morgan Freeman, En Vogue, salt and Peppa, even Dikembe Mutombo of all people. Which makes me wonder, in this movie's universe, is he actually from Zamunda? Murphy and Hall slid back into their roles very easily, all 15 of them. Great to see Akeem and Semi again, the entire barbershop crew is back and they still have things to say. I thought Fowler did a pretty good job as Lavelle, very bright young kid, but hasn't really been given a fair shake in life because, sadly, racism is still a thing. And much like the original movie, this is basically a fish-out-of-water story, but instead of a Zamundan coming to New York City, it's in the other direction. Maybe they should have called it Coming to Zamunda. And throughout the film, Lavelle is trying to find a balance between learning how to be a prince of Zamunda while still staying true to himself. Kiki Lane plays Akeem's oldest daughter, Mika. I thought she did a really good job as well. I enjoyed watching the relationship between her and her newly discovered brother, and they do actually form a bond of sorts, even though she was next in line to the throne until he showed up, and obviously she's not too happy about that. Leslie Jones plays Lavelle's mother, Mary, although really she's just playing herself. And I'd say this movie had just the right amount of Leslie Jones, because she can be a lot. Uh, in my opinion, she is better as a side dish rather than as a main course. Great to see Sherry Headley again. She had a couple of funny moments, not as much as I was hoping she would get, but this is a very crowded movie. Between the old cast and the new, there is a lot packed into the sub-two-hour runtime. And Wesley Snipes is clearly having the time of his life, and man, I had forgotten just how funny he could be. Nowadays, when I think of Snipes, I think of action movies like Blade, but he's very good at comedy. Not everything this movie did was gold, however. First of all, the title. I know it looks clever on paper, but when you have two movies whose titles sound exactly the same, boy does that get confusing. See also Alice Cooper's Welcome to My Nightmare. Alice, Eddie, figure it out. And not all of the jokes landed. We do have our standard low-hanging fruit, like the pointless nut shot and the pointless fart joke. There's a bit in the movie where they are complaining that all Hollywood has to offer nowadays are superheroes, remakes, and pointless sequels that no one asked for. Wah, wah, wah. Also, in the year of our Lord, 2021, this movie has a shake weight joke. Really? There is a musical number in this movie that I thought just went on way too long and really added nothing to the movie. Also, the movie's premise is not exactly the 
best. So basically, Akeem was previously under the impression that Lisa was the only person he had fathered a child with. That shit gets retconned, and the idea of Akeem having an illegitimate son he didn't know about in and of itself isn't necessarily a bad thing, but the execution here, oh boy. First of all, they went through the trouble of recreating the nightclub scene from the first movie using a combination of old footage and some new footage with their faces digitally de-aged, and you can tell the difference. In the new stuff, they do look a bit waxy. And at some point, Akeem meets Mary, and she basically drugs him and then mounts him, which is why he has no memory of ever sleeping with her. So, essentially, she date rapes him. And this is played for laughs. What? It was just completely unnecessary and puts a black mark on a movie that is otherwise not half bad. There had to have been another option here, and between this and Wonder Woman 84, Hollywood, we need to talk. So I'm kinda torn on how to call this one because boy did they make some questionable decisions, but on the other hand, there are a lot of things they did really well. Most of the jokes do land. There is some very funny stuff going on. There's some really good performances. I did enjoy seeing all these characters come back. Just the screenplay really needed another pass. Overall, I would say it's okay, but definitely not as good as the first one. I do not see this one becoming a comedy classic like its predecessor. And since it is on Amazon Prime, if you have Prime and you're at all interested, you might as well give it a watch. It's not going to cost you anything except about two hours of your time. Just be aware that it has some issues. And that's all I got to say about coming to America. Till next time, take care.